Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the new i5-7600K paired with my GTX G1 Gaming GTX 1070. So to get this out of the way, the new generation of Intel CPUs is pretty boring. This isn't a cool new 10 nanometer process or something with crazy IPC gains. KB Lake is a part of the new Intel CPU roadmap that ends a processor generation with an optimization. Beyond some features that very few normal people will use like Intel Octane, the i5-7600K is essentially a slightly improved 6600K with more overclocking potential. The i5-7600K is an unlocked CPU that sits at a stock speed of 3.8GHz with turbo up to 4.2. It's got 6MB of L3 cache and operates with 4 physical cores and no hyperthreading. Right now it's retailing for about $250, which is only $10 more than the current price of the previous 6600K. Along with the new processor, I had to get a new motherboard, so I picked up the MSI Z270 SLI Plus. This isn't the flashiest board out there, but it gets the job done. I think it's got a great black and white look that goes well with my NZXT S340. I went with MSI because I've been very happy with my MSI 970 board and it's easy to use click BIOS. The board comes with most of the new features you see these days with stuff like M.2 SSD slots, USB 3.1 Gen 2, a USB-C connector, multi-GPU support, MSI's Audio Boost 4, and XMP profiles for RAM. On the subject of RAM, this is a new platform, so I picked up a kit of 16 gigs of G-Skill RipJaws DDR4-2400. And you know, it's RAM. It's silver. It, it was the cheapest 2400 RAM on Newegg. I'm not going to pretend like I know what else. Something I didn't expect with this upgrade was Windows 10 working immediately. I booted the machine up expecting to reinstall Windows and it just booted fine. It set itself up for a second and I installed new video and motherboard drivers and that's it. This is a big and welcome change compared to Windows 7. You'll have to re-register your Windows license or get a new OEM key, but beyond that it was totally painless. Okay, so now with all that technical stuff out of the way, let's get into some, well, more technical stuff. I tested the 3D Mark Firestrike benchmark in three games consisting of Fallout 4, The Witcher 3, and Hitman, all at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. I also ran Bioshock Infinite, but was only able to get 1080p and 1440p benchmarks. Each game was run at ultra settings with my previously mentioned GTX 1070. I also ran these tests on my previous CPU, the AMD FX6350, which was overclocked to 4.3 GHz. I'll be doing some comparisons between the two, but it's not meant to make AMD or the 6350 look bad. It's not from a comparable CPU generation, but I thought showing what kind of gains I got might be helpful. 1080p shows great numbers across the board. Average frame rates are all above 80 FPS, and besides Hitman, 1% lows all stay close to 60. The rough 0.1% lows on Hitman seem to be coming from some sort of specific hitching. Hitman's benchmark stutters badly in the beginning no matter what hardware is used. During actual gameplay I was getting 0.1% lows closer to 45 FPS. Moving on to 1440p, we see an average 25% decrease in FPS, but many games are still close to 100 and all staying well above 60 FPS on average. 1% and 0.1% lows hardly move at all, sticking very close to their numbers at 1080p. With a 60Hz monitor, this makes 1440p the definite sweet spot of this CPU-GPU combination. Finally at 4K, we see the 1070 really holding the CPU back, with frame rates dipping into the 30s and 40s on Ultra. The 1070 really isn't a 4K Ultra settings kind of card, so in a real world scenario you'd want to turn your settings down to maybe high or medium for more playable frame rates. So those numbers are all respectable and are all in line with what other channels and websites have found when pairing a 1070 with an i5. So how much did I gain from this upgrade? The FX6350 was released way back in 2012 and has been my CPU for close to two years. Starting with 3 Mark's Firestrike demo, I saw a 38.5% increase in the total score and a 33% increase in the physics test. Those are some decent gains, but of course it's not great to depend on synthetic benchmarks for real-world performance. At 1080p, we see some great performance gains. Average frame rates are up 40%, but the real gains come in the form of 1% low frame rates. 1% lows gain a surprising 63%. So what that leaves us with are games running with significantly better frame times, making stutters almost completely disappear. At 1440p, these increases scaled pretty well. Averages are bumped 23%, and 1% lows went up by 55%. The story changes at 4K with the FX6350 and i5-7600K running almost identically. 
Now don't look into this too much. Many may seem to interpret this as the FX6350 somehow doing better at 4K when all this is showcasing is the GPU bottleneck. The 1070 can only push out so many frames at 4K Ultra, and so that's all we get. If this was a GTX 1080 or a Titan XP, these numbers would be very different. It really confirms that the 1070 is a 1440p sweet spot card if you want ultra settings and 60fps. Overall, the i5-7600K outperforms the FX in every way, which is exactly what I would expect it to do. Stepping back from even the i5, and pretending these are the kind of gains you could get from Ryzen, which is pretty likely, is it worth to upgrade to a newer platform if you're on AMD's FX? I think so. This upgrade has produced noticeably smoother gameplay with less operating system hangs and even faster Adobe Premiere rendering. I can't stress enough that the gains in the low frame rates are more important than the gains in the averages or maxes. With closer frame times you'll get less dips and will finally have that buttery smooth 60fps gameplay you've wanted. A new CPU is never going to have the wow factor that a new GPU can give, but seeing the GTX 1070 finally live up to its name is really worth it. It's been great playing Fallout 4 and Hitman without the sluggish performance I was getting before, and not worrying about cranking those settings up to ultra. And it's important to remember these results were at stock speeds. I haven't done any overclocking yet, and with the 7600K being able to achieve a 5GHz overclock, there's quite a bit of performance to be gained. Currently I'm running my 7600 with a Hyper 212 EVO, which is not the best for overclocking this chip. In the very near future I'll be getting a water cooling solution, possibly an H100i V2, and I'll definitely be making a video covering my experience with it, so be looking out for that one in the next couple weeks. So I guess that's about it. If you have any questions about the new 7600K or my new motherboard, drop me a comment below. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hoped you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section, and as always, hit that subscribe button wherever it is if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. And coming up next week, I'm going to have another video. I'm not sure what it's going to be. It uh, might be the water cooling video I've been mentioning, but uh, that'll just we'll just have to wait and see. I hope you check it out, and I'll see you then.